What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. So if you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. Today we're out in the shop. Um, obviously you've read the description in the video or the title and uh, you figured out that we're gonna repair some oxyacetylene hose today. So I had an oxygen regulator go bad on my oxyacetylene torch setup. Um, what that resulted in was a hose that was blown up. So my hose is, uh, is fairly old. Um, it's an older rig I got used so I have some of this older hose that's uh, that's uh, well weathered. Um, I have a 50 foot hose, so unfortunately it broke like right in the middle of the hose. Of course, it wouldn't be on like the end where I could just you know lop off two feet of the hose and then just put an end on it where it broke. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use the Union Kit from Forney. So Forney sells these little kits. Um, I couldn't find them locally. I had to buy off Amazon. So if you're interested in where I bought them, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out. So basically all I'm doing today is I'm going to uh, separate my hose so that I can put my unions in here. Um, and I'm also going to cut them off flush. These kind of just blew up at the end. Uh, you can basically tell where they where they blew apart um, it, I think it ruptured just the oxygen hose um, so the acetylene hose was fine but I had to cut them both because I thought I was just going to uh, well actually what had happened is I told my buddy to just lop it off um, where it was where it was burst and uh, that I would make two hoses um, and I thought about doing a, uh, an actual fitting union and doing um, you know the ends on both ends so Forney makes um, the end kits to put on there and they make the unions so I bought both just in case I wanted to do something um, different but today we're going to uh, we're just going to do a union so I'm going to show you how I do it should be a fairly easy video separate my two lines a little bit so I can work on it and then um, I'm going to clamp them together. I also got the uh, vice grip looking crimp tool that uh, they that Forney sells online as well. Um, I don't know if this is a is considered a Forney tool or not. Um, it's made in China. It's just like a pair of cheap vice grips with the uh, with the crimper in there. So um, let's change the camera angle. Let's get down on the bench. I'll show you what I do, and uh, hopefully this will be a pretty simple process. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and get these cut off to make them look nice. So I've separated the two. We're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna try two different cutting methods here. This is a carpet knife from Roberts. Um, I'm gonna try cutting the hose this way. Let's see if I can get a nice, nice uh, even line here. Okay, it's a brand new blade and it's a pain in the butt to cut this stuff this braided hose. Um, actually, it looks like that this was where my burst was, so we're gonna go back a little bit further on this, so we're probably gonna be back in here somewhere. I'm gonna score both of them so they look about the same length. It's funny that I just had that tweaked a little bit and that didn't cut across straight. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut that one there. Cut my hose which is easier said than done. Um, let's try some Wiss titanium coated scissors on this. All purpose scissors, let's see what it's got. Oh man, okay, so I planned on doing a review on these Wiss scissors. Um, these are the W10Ts. Uh, I've had them for a long time and uh, they don't disappoint. You saw just how fast they just chop through that hose. Um, they're great all purpose scissors for the shop. Um, really come in handy. I mean they just they just mowed through that hose like nothing. I just didn't even put any effort into it. Well that one I had to put some effort into it. Call me a liar already. But uh, chop them right off. Looks good. So I've got my ends prepared. Let's go ahead and open my kit and see how this goes. Alright. Let's go ahead and get my unions out here. Should be fairly straightforward. Um, I assume that this uh, goes over the tube like that and then this guy goes on here like this. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble everything um, together and then we're going to go ahead and crimp after. So go ahead and put my ferrule on here. Go ahead and put my union piece in here. Now what I like to do from time to time um, if I'm working with hose, any braided fitting, is I really like to lube up 
uh, or put some high temp sealant on my barb here. Um, this seems like a really positive engagement. I'm going to take the chance that gas won't leak around this. Um, and we're going to put them together dry. Now sometimes that high temp sealant will also allow you to um, allow you to seat the the barbed fitting all the way in. Kind of just slides in there easy, but this by hand is doing pretty well. So let's read the instructions. Of course there are no instructions. They just expect you to, to be able to know what you're doing. So um, all right, so now the other side we're gonna put our ferrules on here and Let's go ahead and put our hose together. It goes like this, right? Just kidding. Um, so watch about the time that I joke about it and you always mess up when you joke about it. Okay, so our union looks like that when it's gonna be together. Looks pretty slick. I like it. So looks like I need to seat it in the, in the other hose a little bit more. This is tough stuff so all right we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and crimp this so that I have room I fear if I put this together I'm not gonna have room to get my crimper in there so I earlier in the video you saw I had the vise open a little bit to kind of hold my hose up so now now we're gonna go ahead and crimp here sorry for the pop the pause and the burp um, I wanted to make sure that I was in camera. So let's go ahead and crimp this down. So I assume, I oh, see that needs, a, has a, man that was way out. Okay, need to put that in some more. Okay, now we're tight. All right, now let's go ahead and crimp it down. I assume you just crimp it down right there on the end. Um, no rhyme or reason to it. Let's go ahead and give it the give it the business. Okay. All right. That was a really positive crimp on there. I like to be really anal and methodical about it, so we're gonna make sure that we get it lined up as well on the other side. Okay. So that's literally all it was. Just crimp it down like that. Now I don't know if you need to put a second crimp on the other side. That seems really, really positive and really tight. So um, I think it just holds it on there so it doesn't come off pretty easy. All right, let's go ahead and do my green side. Whoa, don't forget about that ferrule. All right, let's go ahead and push this together. Okay. The oxygen hose went a lot easier. So let's go ahead and crimp this side together. It looks fairly even when I have my hose down here like this. It looks fairly even. It looks like that one side may be a little long, but whatever. I'm not that picky about it. It's going to be in the middle of my hose. Let's just go ahead and make sure that it's even on both sides. Before I do that, I want to make sure my ferrule is tight. Could be a little tighter. Go ahead, move that in. All right, now. Let's just go ahead and crimp her down. This tool is pretty easy. Um, it's basically just like a set of vice grips. You just clamp it down with two hands and and then uh, let it up with the little lever. And boom, done, just like that. I've repaired my oxyacetylene hose. So um, now we'll get some pressure on it. I'll probably put it on my, my, uh, my torch set and uh, pressure check it and make sure it's good to go. So the proper tool for the job would be like a sniffer to make sure that no air is coming out of it. But what we're going to use is uh, just some soap and water, um, see if we can get any bubbles out of it. But yeah, boom, repaired my hose. Now let's go pressure check it. All right, let's bring my hose over here. And let's hook it up to my set here, make sure my bottles are turned off. Always safety first. All right, always keep in mind that one of your uh, one of your fittings, the uh, usually the acetylene side is reverse thread, so righty loosey, lefty tighty on that one. So just keep that in mind. Usually the the nut on the on the end of the hose 
has little divots in the side of it to let you know that it's reverse thread. Let's pull my torch handle out here. Let's go ahead and righty, righty Lucy on that one. Come on. Talk to it, it'll. Wow, all right. Being a pain in the butt. Really? During my video? Seriously? Get up. Only me will get a crescent wrench stuck. You kidding me? Wow. All right. So apparently I had that way too, way too tight on there or something. All right. Come on. Yeah. Easier said than done. Man, I'm really struggling with this one. Okay. So I just had this hose on here for the time being when I had to replace it just so that we could get the project done. What had happened was is I, uh, I blew the hose right during, during a project and uh, it was just the worst timing ever. We had to run to the store and uh, it never goes bad when you need it to. It always goes bad when you're trying to do something. So I'm sure everybody can attest to that. So let's go ahead and put my hoses back on here. Green for oxygen, red for acetylene. Some people, some people use different gases. I tend to stay traditional with it. It's just always worked. Um, I've never had any problems with oxygen and acetylene or their availability, so just went ahead and stick with it. Not really a deal breaker. All right. Let's go ahead and put my torch back together here. <clears throat> now torches are, are labeled and the threads are different so they can only go on one way. So that's why they do left handed and right handed. Um, so you can't really screw it up. So, so I, you can't screw it up. It's impossible to screw it up. So you know, if just paying attention, you'll be fine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to change, now that we've got everything hooked up, what I'm going to do is change the camera angle. I'm going to show you how we, how we test for leaks um, in the system here so uh, you can see exactly how I do it. So let's go over and do that now. Let's turn on our gas. Always stay away from the gauges, from the front of the gauges. I always usually stand to the side and open them real slow. You don't need to open the open the uh, open it very uh, very far. Uh, a lot of people say a quarter turn, half turn, whatever. Uh, make sure we have gas. Everything's coming out. All right. So went ahead and shut the torch down. Now let's check our fittings and make sure they don't leak. And we'll call it a wrap. Okay, so I actually bought these, uh, this is a caveat, um, I actually bought these cookie sheets at Walmart. They're a pretty good backdrop for, for videos, and they're also, also great for working around the shop so you can put nuts and bolts in it, and uh, they don't go anywhere. They're real nice and tough. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get an acid brush and some soap. Okay, so literally I have some dish soap. I have it mixed up in a spray bottle. Um, literally just spray it on here. Uh, now some, some people will spray it on the acid brush here and then you can dab it on here. It'll, it'll bubble up a lot better. So depending on whichever way you want to do it, really doesn't matter. Uh, let's just make sure we soap our whole fitting here. And the way to check for leaks is this soap will make big bubbles if there's air coming out anywhere. So just keep soaping it and check for leaks. It's kind of a good way to check it. Some people use this method on gas line. Um, I've done it on gas line, air line. Um, you can use it for tires. Um, this is under pressure. Our, our tanks are on. Our torch is shut. And looks like we're good. We're leak free. Now we'll have one spot of the hose that's cleaner than the other. So <laughs> that's just the way of the world. All right, looks like we are leak free and that was a successful splice. I like it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked the short and sweet video on how to splice your oxyacetylene hose. Um, don't be afraid to buy the uh, buy the kit and do it. Um, really not that big of a deal. Usually I, I uh, 
you know, kind of make these videos for people that are um, that have never done it themselves. Um, I think I've done it one time before this and I didn't even have the tools. I was using someone else's tools. So um, I hope you find value in my content. And if you do so, please hit subscribe, smash that like button if that's what you're into. And as always, we'll see you guys next video.